Italy, one of the world's most famous and universally beloved nations, not only for its natural beauty, for the culture and rich history it's given to a very large chunk of the planet, but of course for its food. Ho vissuto qua in Italia per un anno e vi devo dire che il cibo è meraviglioso, sempre. <laughs> Ma non solo per i piatti salati, tipo la carbonara da Roma, la lasagna da Emilia, ma anche assolutamente senza dubbio i dolci. E oggi stiamo parlando di tiramisu. Tiramisu, or tiramisu, in my slightly less poetic accent, <laughs> is world famous. And I think many of us, especially those of us who have a, a dependence on coffee, can fully understand why. <laughs> This dessert is shockingly one of Italy's newer food creations. It's only really been part of the kind of food culture here since the early 1980s, apparently. But it's a dessert that, despite its newness, is probably the most kind of iconic Italian dessert that most of us can think of, both having spoken to Italians who live here and, of course, to you know, people from the UK, people from other parts of the world, tiramisu is kind of the Italian dessert. And honestly speaking, it's from a part of the country that doesn't hold the strongest kind of food culture and heritage. Settled within the northeast region of Veneto, Treviso is the city in which tiramisu was supposedly created. This global favorite made with layers of espresso-soaked Savoyardi biscuits and a sweetened thick, fluffy, heavenly mascarpone cream is such a great dessert. It's one of those things that can be made in a million different ways, and I think that's what makes it so good. Of course, the very nature of, you know, the very stereotypical Italian love of food and its own food culture is that things here are done very by the book. Things are classic and things are pretty much untouched and preserved for good reason. There should not be cream in a carbonara. There should not be certain ingredients inside a ragu. But equally, people here also have very, very, very common little kind of bits and pieces that they will change when they are making something themselves. There will be people that tell you the best pizza in Italy is found in Naples, but some prefer the Roman style. There will be some tell you that the best pasta shape is from their region while others violently disagree. And much like many hyper famous Italian recipes, many families have their own little take on it. And tiramisu is no different. While the classic version was said to be made very, very simply by using eggs, mascarpone, savoyardi biscuits, and coffee with a little bit of sugar for a kind of sweetness and to add that extra lift that tiras yusu. <laughs> some people like to add liqueur. Some people like the coffee to be aggressively strong. Some people like the coffee to be quite weak and just a subtle kind of background note. In some places, they add cream. In some places, they don't use the egg whites. They just like to use the egg yolks. Some people I've spoken to here even use a completely different kind of biscuit. They'll just use like a standard, almost plain vanilla biscuit that I don't fully understand personally, but that's just the way their family does it. And tiramisu, like many Italian foodstuffs, is one of those things that no matter how you make it, it's very, very difficult to make or eat a bad one. <laughs> Today, I want to bring you something as close as I personally enjoy to the kind of classic example of tiramisu. This This recipe contains less than 10 ingredients and it can be made super, super fast, allowing for just a little bit of time for it to sit in the fridge and get to that perfect texture. This is a recipe that's easily divided or multiplied. It's one you can make at short notice or you can make a couple of days beforehand. But this is my kind of close take to the original recipe and it's the one that makes me think of my wonderful husband Francesco because, you know, it's, it's It's pretty close to his recipe, to be honest. <laughs> so get comfortable and let's talk about, make and eat this gorgeous, famous Italian dessert. Andiamo. This wonderful coffee-based recipe, of course, begins with coffee. You can use coffee made from a kind of cafetiere or mocha pot, or you can use straight up espresso like I like to. Just as long as you kind of pour it into a wide dish and allow it to cool a little bit, then you can get onto your other ingredients. Beginning with three large eggs that you're just going to want to separate into yolks and whites, into two separate large clean bowls because we're going to be whisking a lot of air into these little beauties. You don't need the whites straight away but you will need the yolks so you're just going to pour in a little bit of caster sugar 
always a lot less in tiramisu than you would expect because it's not really a dessert that needs to be sweetened much. It's much more about those kind of creamy flavors and textures than it is about sweetness. And you're just going to want to beat the living daylights out of this with a whisk, ideally an electric one to save yourself the graft, for about two or three minutes just until it's nice and pale and fluffy before adding a gloriously gluttonous amount of mascarpone to the mixture. <laughs> You don't want to add it all in one go, but doing it in kind of two halves or in three thirds will just make sure that you can get a nice amount of air in there without having any big lumps of that cheese hanging around. And you just want it to be nice and kind of light and loosey and moussey looking before then cleaning off your whisk if you're using the same kind of electric whisk. Maybe you have a house with two electric whisks. I don't know why but good for you. <laughs> Otherwise, clean off your whisk and set one of the fluffy mixtures aside, ready to make the other nice and light and fluffy. To this, if you like, it's not essential, but for the sake of the stability of the kind of egg white and just for a little bit of balance and seasoning in the flavor, you can add just a little pinch of regular salt to your egg whites before beating them into lovely soft white peaks. Not quite as stiff as you would for mixing a meringue mixture, but just to get them nice and fluffy. You're then going to combine those two marvelous mixtures together. Start by putting just a little kind of dollop, maybe about one third of those fluffy egg whites into the egg yolk mascarpone mixture and just beat it in quite violently just to kind of loosen it up to make sure it's easy to add the remaining egg whites. Then you're going to want to kind of fold and stir very gently until these two are just combined together. Beating it too much will knock out way too much of the air and will cause this to be more dense than you'd like it. So just until you don't see any kind of lumps or big separate kind of egg yolk or egg white bits until it's looking nice and golden and creamy before looking out your lovely Savoyardi and ladyfinger trifle sponges, whatever you want to call them, and setting up a nice little kind of workstation with your cold coffee, your biscuits and your mascarpone mixture ready to make a tiramisu. On this particular occasion, because I was making it just for myself and Francesco, I decided to layer these up in some fancy glasses. You can do this in regular, you know, water glasses. You can do this in brandy glasses, wine glasses, or you can use this recipe to fill up a whole kind of trifle dish or baking tray, whatever you want to do with your tiramisu. Start by adding a blob of the mascarpone cream before dunking a couple of those Savoyardi biscuits in the coffee for just a couple of seconds, too long and they'll just fall to bits, like dunking a biscuit in your tea, and then just stack them up on top of the cream. If you need to, you can kind of break them up into little pieces or put them in whole, whatever you like. And then just continue the layering process until you've used up all your coffee, all your biscuits, and or all of your mascarpone mixture, whatever goes first. And just look at that. Typically, a tiramisu will come in kind of two to three layers at most, but if you have a particularly deep dish, of course, feel free to make it as many layers as you like. Some people like it with more of the mascarpone, some people like it with more of the kind of coffee-soaked Savoyardi, however you like it leave it in the fridge for at least 30 minutes and up to kind of 24 hours just to soften beautifully and let all of those flavors and textures mingle together into this creamy, fluffy, soft, sweet, coffee-soaked dream of a dessert.